hello and welcome to today's video my name is Joanne if you are new to my channel welcome on today's video I'll be doing a movie review for the horror film when evil lurks which is an Argentinian horror thriller written and directed by Damien Rugna today is Halloween in the United States uh, I'm not sure what other countries celebrate Halloween but if you do Happy Halloween, uh, happy belated Halloween. I'm not sure if I'll be posting this on Halloween night or tomorrow, which is November 1st. <laughs> but if you celebrate Halloween, I hope you had a great Halloween and you got a lot of candy. That's why I have my shirt on. This is a skeleton, it's a full skeleton outfit that I had on today. Uh, if you're new to my channel, I like to do movie reviews, uh, travel content, New York City content. So if you're into that sort of thing, please consider subscribing. I am working towards getting a thousand subscribers by the end of the year. So if you could help me out, that would be amazing. Today I'll be reviewing a Shutter original film. This film is a possession film, but it's not your typical possession. Like no one's gonna be tied up to a bed. They treat this possession, this evil entity as some sort of sickness that just spreads throughout the possessions are treated like a disease it's so gross once you're possessed and you're infected you get all bloated and gross you start leaking green fluid it's disgusting so the description on imdb reads as follows in a remote village two brothers find a demon infected man just about to give birth to evil itself they decide to get rid of the man but merely succeed in spreading the chaos the film was released by IFC Films and it was acquired by Shudder, which makes it Shudder's first Spanish language original film. When Evil Lurks premiered on Shudder this past weekend on the 27th, and if you're going to stream a possession film this month, or I know Christmas is coming, but if you're in the mood to watch a horror film and you want to watch a possession film, watch When Evil Lurks. Just FYI, I am about to spoil the whole movie from beginning to end. So if you don't like spoilers, I suggest that you go watch the film and then come back here so we could talk about it. Or you can just watch another one of my films. I mean, another one of my videos. Okay, so the movie opens with two brothers, Jimmy and Pedro, who hear some gunshots, but they decide that they are going to investigate early in the morning. Okay, so they go into the woods early in the morning and find a man killed split in half this man they only found the torso it was disgusting oh my god i'm sorry i it's like every time i try to record a video an ambulance has to go by or the police the brothers find the half bottom of a man that was murdered and cut in half his guts were everywhere and the brothers determined that he was a cleaner, which is what they call an exorcist. So he was in the area doing some sort of exorcism. And I guess he wasn't that good at his job because he got killed and split in half. As the brothers investigate, they end up at this farmhouse where they find this older woman and her two sons, one which is infected with a demon inside of him. And the other one, which I'm going to get to later, I forgot his name, but his younger brother is also there so the one that's infected with the demon he's bedridden he looks disgusting he's like bloated and he has all these things in his skin and he's leaking like green fluid it's gross this movie is really graphic and disgusting <laughs> and this guy is just like begging to be killed but it's not really him talking it's the demon so the guy that is bedridden he is referred to as an embichado which translates to rotten, the, the subtitles, every time they said embichado, it was rotten. I don't know if that's the correct translation. But anyways, uh, they call him embichado, which means he's in the, he's possessed. He's in the process of giving birth to this demon entity. So while he's like, getting ready to give birth the presence of the demon is spreading throughout so after pedro and jimmy the two brothers find the embichado the rotten i'm gonna call it embichado so that's what i mean the rotten guy the possessed guy 
So after they, re they find him, they go to the police. So this is something that apparently happens a lot over there in the world of this movie. Uh, this is something that's somewhat common and people believe in it. Uh, so they go to the police to ask for help and the police is like, no, nah, we're not doing that. And apparently the police had known about this MB Chado for a whole year and they have done nothing. And the guy just keeps getting bigger and bigger. And you know, Pedro and his brother are panicking because in the world of this movie, this is a serious thing. Possessions, you know? I mean, possessions are serious. Nobody wants to be possessed by the devil. But this is like a serious situation that and they don't, the police doesn't want to help them because they need a professional, like a cleaner, which is an exorcist. So after they realize the police is not going to help them, they go to their neighbor, Ruiz, who owns some land and he doesn't want that spreading through the land because it's going to bring down the, the value of his property. So he decides to help them. And Ruiz also has a pregnant wife, so he doesn't want that thing near the baby, near the unborn baby. So Ruiz comes up with a bright idea to move the embichado, the rotten guy, away from the farm because he doesn't want that thing being born under land. But apparently this is something you're not supposed to do. Move a possessed person from their home because you're only going to spread the evil. But the one thing all these people in the, in the movie do is not follow the rules. So Ruiz decides to move the body and drive it like two hours away. And on the way over there to wherever they were going, they almost hit this kid. And by the when they get to the destination, they realize that the body wasn't in the truck. It came off when they almost hit the kid. I don't know where it is. So now Ruiz is like, you know what? 20 minutes is far enough. We don't want it near the land. But it's too late because the evil has started spreading everywhere. So now this evil entity is following everyone, is following Jimmy and, and Pedro, the two brothers, is following Ru uh, Ruiz, who's the first one. He's like having dinner with his wife or no, he was doing something with his wife and his wife realizes they own a farm and his wife notices a strange goat mixed in with the other goat. That goat is possessed. So Ruiz, comes out with his shotgun. He shoots up in the air. All the other goats goes running away, except for the possessed one. He just stood there, he stood his ground, and he slowly walked up to Ruiz and the shotgun, slowly, and put his forehead right on the, on the, um, on the shotgun, at the end of the shotgun. Like, what are you gonna do? Shoot me, bitch. This goat had a lot of balls. Okay, this demon that possessed the goat. So in the film, it's explained that there are rules to prevent a possession. Like you need to follow certain rules so you don't get possessed. You should not use electricity. You should not chant the devil's name or a demon's name. You should not pay attention to when taunting you. And you should not use any firearms. You should also not kill a possessed person because then you become possessed. You should let it, you should let the cleaner or the exorcist take care of the possessed person. So it is, a... oh my God, again. Oh yeah, so don't kill a possessed person because then you become possessed. So Ruiz, of course, decides to ignore all the rules and he shoots the goat right in the head. And his wife, knowing what's about to happen, she hits him with an ax right in the, in the head and then she herself which is the picture in the poster the lady holding the axe that's her about to hit herself with the axe and unalive herself i mean this lady was pregnant so i don't know what's gonna happen with the baby because she was looked like she was about to pop so if someone found her in time and took the baby out that baby might be possessed but i don't know how that works <laughs> It, does, it, it doesn't show in the movie if somebody found them. It just shows her killing the husband after he shoots the goat and then her on the living herself. And then it cuts to the brothers. So now this evil entity continues to spread. It's spreading like bed bugs in Paris. Okay, Jimmy and Pedro decide to go to get their family, they get their mom. And Pedro has two kids with this lady who is now married with somebody else. So he goes to her house to get his two kids. He has a younger kid and he has an older kid who's disabled. 
So Pedro, as soon as he gets to his ex-wife's house, who's now married, and she has a younger daughter, okay? Remember that. She has a younger daughter. So the wife, I guess Pedro hasn't been there in years. So as soon as she sees him, she's triggered, and she's cursing him out and yelling. And there's all this fighting going around. The whole sequence was just so much. Because, so as soon as Pedro gets to the house, he takes up all his clothes because he's like, he's been around demon cologne, so he has to take it off, okay? And he needs to change. It's like bed box. You have to leave it out, the clothes outside. But the wife, the ex-wife, has this big dog. So you know how dogs are. They go and sniff everything as soon as somebody comes home. So as soon as he took his clothes off, the dog starts sniffing his clothes and he gets possessed. And I don't know where, I tell you, when this happened, I almost fell off my bed because... There's so much going on in this scene, like the wife is like cursing him out and she's screaming and it's like, Oh, you left. You haven't been here in years. You don't take care of your kids. Yada, yada, yada. And then there's uh, the, his, her younger daughter is just standing in the hallway with the dog right next to her. And they just look really calm. And the, the wife and Pedro and his um, and her new husband are like just arguing in the background. And out of nowhere, this dog just turns and bites the shit out of <laughs> this little girl it's not funny but it, the, it just came out of nowhere and I just jumped he just bit her head off and I was just chewing her around like a rag doll so and the younger son who was standing by her he's just like paralyzed seeing this and there was everyone still screaming so he finally he snaps out of it and he tells them oh the dog what uh, Roger was his name Roger just killed Vicky I think that was her name so the dad, the new dad, her new husband, the little girl's father, they're like looking because the dog ran off with the little girl in his mouth. So the new, the little girl's dad finds the dog, shoots the possessed dog. Remember, you can't shoot or kill anyone, any possessed person or use firearms. Rules out the window. No one listens. He shoots the dog. Then he becomes possessed and then he drives his truck right into the house killing the uh pedro's ex-wife and then pedro is like driving off as this is all happening he like drove off with his two kids the younger one and the disabled one and look this all could have been avoided if that lady his ex-wife didn't start screaming the moment she saw uh pedro the little girl would have been alive probably <laughs> i mean it wouldn't be as interesting that sequence would have been as interesting or exciting but if only that woman would have listened because she wasn't trying to hear him. She was just screaming and yelling. Her voice was so annoying. Her like screaming and just crying nonstop. I was like, oh my God, ladies, shut up. Anyways, so uh, Jimmy and Pedro drive off. Jimmy went and got his mom and they drive off to another town to get away from the madness. So now it's, uh, so Pedro, Jimmy, their mom, Pedro's two kids are driving into to another town, but they decide to make a quick stop to see this woman who's a cleaner. She used to be uh, an exorcist or a cleaner. So they're going to stop to see her to see if she could help. Somehow, Pedro's ex-wife who got hit by the truck and died, she's now like a zombie, kind of like La Llorona. She just found her way to them and she's just like, my kids, I want my kids, where are my kids? So she goes into the lady, the cleaner's house because that's where they, they're at. She grabs the younger one, the little boy, and she runs off with him. So they decide to come up with a plan. Pedro is gonna go find the original guy, the embichado from the, from the beginning of the movie that was possessed. He's gonna track him down and him and the cleaner lady are going to kill him. So this all could end. Um, and then Jimmy decides that he's going to drive and find Pedro's wife, ex-wife, and get the little boy back. But then Pedro is like driving and he sees her walking on the road. And this lady, she's just like grabbing. She has her son, holding her son, and she's just going like this. She's eating his brains. I was like, gross. It was so gross. <laughs> 
<laughs> she is carrying him like she he's a bag of popcorn just eating his brains and the boy's dead obviously this demon entity does not discriminate <laughs> he's just taking kids animals old people young people he does not care he's just killing everybody he's just infecting the whole town although this film was really like graphic and gross with the portrayal of you know like the aftermath of a, of a possession i really i thought i did think that it was an original take on possession films and how this evil is spreading like a disease in the air so you you're you can't trust anyone like you don't know who's possessed who's not possessed so i like that about the film so then at the end the disabled kid gets possessed so before they get to the cleaner's house um jimmy and pedro's mom was the one that was explaining the rules of how not to get possessed by a demon she was explaining it to the younger boy in the car because he asked so she gives him all the rules and she's just saying this like it is an old folks tale you know and she's like oh there's a song about it and she starts singing the song and then when she says the part about you can't chant uh the demon's name the little boy was like oh so what are the names and he and she starts telling the names and then jimmy and pedro are like can you stop so when the grandmother said the whole thing about chanting the demon's name and she said the names the disabled boy picked up one of the names and he just kept repeating it under his breath like his uh his disability he's not able to really communicate ver verbally he doesn't say a lot of words and he, i think he can't really walk so he just started like repeating the name under his breath and he ends up being possessed and there's a scene when you realize he's possessed when the grandmother she's just like praying with her rosary and and the disabled kid just walks into the house and he's like grandma i'm hungry can you make me something to eat or like a tea or something and she's just like uh because before that he couldn't even walk or talk and out of nowhere he's just like walking in there talking and he actually eats the grandmother which is sad they don't show that part they just at the end the last scene when pedro realizes that the, the disabled boy is possessed the disabled boy was eating something he starts choking and he's like Pedro's like don't eat so fast but he continues to choke so Pedro goes to help him and he pulls like all this hair out of his mouth and his grandmother's rosary which is when he realizes this mother effer is possessed and just ate my mother in the end the demon is born and then Pedro and his brother fail to defeat him and they lose pretty much all their family when pedro went with the cleaner to find the embichado the guy that was possessed at the beginning of the movie they find him at this school and there is all these kids in this school that were possessed and pedro doesn't listen he doesn't like listen to instructions or rules <laughs> because they finally find him in an auditorium and the cleaner She's like, Pedro, don't listen to the kids. Don't listen to them. Don't pay attention. Because one of the kids is like, No, I can help you. There's an axe over there. Yada, yada, yada. And then, because uh, the cleaner is like, Man, you, to kill this possessed people, you need like a special equipment, some sort of weird contraction that you have to put together like a puzzle. Prayers don't work. It has to be like this special machinery that takes forever to put together because as the cleaner is putting together this machinery machinery uh she tells him to get the fat guy out of like wherever he's at he's like under the um uh underground somewhere but the guy is so fat like pedro's having a hard time doing it so one of the kids is like there's an axe over there that can help you go get the axe and the uh and the cleaner's like, like don't listen to them don't listen to them don't leave me alone with him and what does Pedro do? He goes, he walks off to look for this axe when the little girl was lying because it was the demon talking through her. And the kids destroy the machinery. That, that's the only thing that could kill this demon. They kill the cleaner lady, the exorcist woman who told Pedro not to leave her alone. And then he left her alone. She died. 
the machinery is destroyed and the mb chavo just exploded well he didn't like explode but he was already ready to give birth and this young little boy came out of the mb chavo the possessed guy it's like full of red blood and the demon just walks out well it's like it's not a demon it is a demon but it's in the form it's in human form in the form of a child and he just walks into the sunset with all the kids following him and pedro is left behind crying if he only had listened that's all he had to do throughout the whole movie he wasn't listening paying attention if he had minded his business, none of this would be happening to him. The movie ends with Pedro outside of his house crying as he realizes that his son is possessed and his whole family is dead. You know, if him and his brother Jimmy would have just ignored the gunshots and not gone to investigate at the beginning of the movie, they would have been fine. You know, just mind your business. But I guess there wouldn't be a movie. <laughs> So towards the end, we find out that the possessed guy, the embichado, his brother, remember I told you, uh, go back to him. His brother was actually the one that killed the guy that they found split in half. His brother was possessed this whole time. And he's the one that set this whole thing in motion. He killed the cleaner who came to like kill his brother who was about to give birth. So his brother had already, uh, the embichado who was possessed, that demon had already taken over his brother's mind and told the guy to kill his mom, kill the, the cleaner. And that's who the, um, the brothers, Pedro and Jimmy found. It was all because of this guy at the beginning of the movie. So at the end, this demon won and he's just walking around Argentina causing chaos. All these characters were really bad and made really stupid decisions. Pedro was the worst one. He didn't learn from his mistakes and he never listened to anyone or he just, and he just did whatever he wanted, which didn't help at the end. I don't know if it was the stress of, you know, I'm about to be possessed by a demon that, you know, um, just made them act the way they were acting. But if this is common in your world and you know this happens and you know how to prevent it from happening, why will you not follow the rules or, you know, just, mind your business <laughs> overall although i did not like the ending of this movie because there was not really a resolution uh i thought the movie was well done it was very graphic at times and frustrating in other times but you know i thought it was a good story and a unique way to tell a possession film I really liked the setting that it was set in latin america and argentina and as a latin person i know that in Latin America, people believe in all that stuff, which kind of made it a little more real for me because it kind of put me in that situation. And it's like, you know, this is like, it's really happening. Why are you acting the way that you're acting? So it, it, was, it added to the frustration, which I really enjoy. I mean, I liked. Not that I like to be frustrated, but <laughs> I felt like it just added to the watching experience because, you know, if you grow up listening to these stories and you know how to prevent things from happening like why are you acting the way you're acting but if they were kind of smart this movie wouldn't be so entertaining so i guess it's fine <laughs> overall i gave this film two stars i really enjoyed it i thought it was really good and really well made uh, so if you want to watch a good possession film check out uh when evil lurks which you can watch on shutter and that is the video. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this review. If you've seen When Evil Lurks, please comment below, share your thoughts. Or if you're planning on seeing when, when Evil Lurks, come back and tell me what you thought about the film. Don't forget to subscribe and help me get to a thousand subscribers. And I hope you have a great day or night wherever you are in the world. Until next time, bye.